everybody, this is uh, Lieutenant Cameron Mack again here. We're uh, in for part two of our new equipment series. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over two pieces of equipment at once. For our new CMC clutch from Harkin Industrial, as well as our Petzl ASAP here from uh, Petzl. So, first one we're going to talk about is our CMC clutch. So, this one, the first thing we're going to notice is, is the biggest difference between this and our MPD and our ID is that this is the color gray. So that is important because a gray color indicates it's for a different size or different diameter rope than our red equipment is. Our red equipment is for half inch rope. This is for seven sixteenths or 11 millimeter. They aren't compatible. The ropes are gonna be switched around so the mistakes can't be made. And uh, these are only to be used with our new CMC G11 rope here, which is our 11 millimeter rope. Um, these are going to be on our two front running engines, engine 3 and engine 4, uh, for now, and the half inch rope will all be switched to the rescue trailer and our ladder truck. So, we'll start with the kind of the anatomy of this. Um, looking at the face plate here, it gives you a visual picture of how to rig it. You'll notice that what's different from the way we rig the ID is that the anchor is always towards the top and it comes down to the tail end out the bottom. So that can get easy to flip around if you're used to the ID. Um, I think this is a little bit more intuitive to use, a little ergonomically friendly, uh, certainly more ergonomically friendly than the uh, MPD was. Um, so this kind of takes the place of the MPD and the ID all in one piece of equipment. It's about the same price as the MPD. Um, the ID is significantly cheaper, but it takes the place of both of them. Um, so. The first thing is, is this is an aluminum faceplate. You'll also notice here, this is a Beckett. If you want to build like a five to one mechanical advantage system, um, this is rated for 22 kilonewtons. And this actual whole unit itself is NFPA 2500 certified. It is G rated um, for a two person load as well. So well, another big advantage right on the front here is that you'll notice is we can clip this to our main ventral connection or to a uh, haul system without having to disconnect it from the system and risk dropping it. Um, that is awesome. We all love that. We all get nervous when we have to unclip the ID and risk losing our equipment to the ground. Um, next thing we'll notice here, uh, this is the way we open it, okay? It says two times. It's kind of a safety feature, so you don't just click it once when you're on the rope and it pops open completely. So you click it once, it opens halfway, can't open it anymore. Click it one more time. Now it's completely open, okay? Again, one click, two click, it's open, okay? So the first difference you'll see here is that as compared to the ID, this is an actual uh, high efficiency pulley, okay? Um, it's not, it doesn't have that squared off cam in the end that, that the ID has, so this is actually much more efficient for a lot of things like uh, ascending with the rope, which we're gonna show you shortly. Uh, next thing you'll notice in here is uh, it's kind of got a, a few grooves in the shiv of the pulley itself. Uh, these are wear indicators. Once you stop seeing those, it's an, uh, it's an indication of significant wear. It also, very important here, don't know how well you can see it. It says the size of the rope that it's used for, 10 and a half to 11 millimeter. So if you're ever worried that you're using the wrong size rope or you're not sure, look at that before you load anything, okay? Okay. Now, you'll notice that it's pinched, and we will uh, we'll load this rope now. Um, it has the same kind of control handle as the ID. We have to take it out of the store mode and to standby, and you can watch the pulley kind of move there, and that will give us enough room to load our rope, okay? Now, I'm gonna clip this into my ventral connection here first before we do anything, just to make it a little easier for me. Okay, and as you can see, I can still load it. Um, remember, Unlike the ID that I used to load down here, we'll, we'll have to actually load it from the top, okay? So load it all the way around. And one of my favorite things about this here is a safety, it has an audible safety sound system. It's a ratcheting noise, you can kind of hear, and that'll tighten it up, okay? That, every time you tighten this before you use it, you give it a good function test to make sure it works like we want it to, okay? Put that back in store mode. All right, so that's this for now. Um, next thing we're gonna talk about is our ASAP lock, okay? 
This is our new belay system. Um, it is a trailing belay. Uh, this is awesome. It can take the place of a, a one hole rescue and let rescuer and let them go do another job that might be needed to do. So the anatomy of this one, I'll start with again, this is kind of the rope channel here. You see it says ASAP block and it says up. So when we're gonna repel or ascend, this up is obviously gonna be facing up. Pretty intuitive, okay? Um, rope just slides in there nicely, just like that, okay? Um, next part of it, if you can see it kind of here, is this locking wheel. It spins, it's kind of tight, that's okay. Uh, I talked to Petzl, that's fairly normal. Um, and this wheel will is what allows it to trail up behind you or down and once this wheel uh, spins to a certain speed uh, which is too fast it will lock itself off and uh, the pins will shift and it'll cam itself shut and use friction and the teeth to lock onto the rope and catch you um, i'm not sure what the speed actually is i believe it's a little over like nine feet a second i could be wrong on that um, either way it's very fast i've seen videos um, where they've got like this much rope and the thing will catch you on a fall. Um, so when it's normally stored, it's stored like this. You'll see some yellow handles here. You just pull those out and that's how you open it up so you can insert the rope in, okay? You put that rope in right there, shut that. And the first thing we're gonna do is function test it, okay? So you kind of rope, raise it up this only needs to be done once before you go up and you'll just give it a quick jerk down see how fast that went barely used any rope um, that's how fast it would have caught me now before you can do anything else you need to unlock it okay this lock does not unlock it right now in this situation okay so what we need to do you might not be able to hear this on the video you just need to kind of raise it up a little and rock it and you'll hear some the pin shift back right there and now it can come down again okay all right the next part of this is our shock pack this is rated for a two-person load it is not nfpa 2500 but it is through ANSI as long as it's used with this shock pack and with this petzl oxane carabiner um, with a captive okay the captive is to prevent since this isn't always going to be in tension and this pet and this uh carabiner can shift on your on your sternal d-ring here and and side load this will should keep it from doing that hopefully um the next thing the shock tack here this is uh an asap zorber access what this is is this is just kind of some protection for some webbing in here that if i pull it out you'll see there's stitched webbing that's stitched together um what this does is it's kind of a progressive energy absorber as it, it senses so much force being produced during the fall, it will progressively tear away the webbing um, more and more as the force increases to reduce the force that the faller or rescuer, or whatever you want to call yourself, sustains and to reduce the force that the um, rope sustains as well. So that's what that is. Okay, next we're going to climb. So I'm going to get ready to climb here. I'm just going to use uh, my handle descender. Uh, might still be using Pro 6 at this point. It's the same thing. Just do your three wrap Pro 6 right here. Girth hitch a couple down to your, so it's long enough that you can reach your foot up inside of uh, one of the loops so you can stand up on it, okay? So we'll get that up. Tighten up this, this uh, clutch. Raise that up as much as you can. We've already function tested it. Okay, I like this to be right here. I got a right-handed one. We actually have a left-handed one coming to the station. Um, make sure that's our character. Transfer's going out. All right, so put your put this back out of store mode. Set down. Um, this is kind of called what we like to call the uppercut method. Get your foot under your butt sit up and at the same time you stand up catch yourself okay notice also as well as i'm going up i like to have this over my arm if we have it under if we fall and catch ourselves it's going to be hard on our shoulder okay just get that up as you can you should also lock that off every time you aren't holding on to this rope um so we'll go up a couple more times 
I like to go about every two, lock it off, come back over, raise that back up, okay? Go two more, then we'll switch back over. Lock that off. Okay, now something that can happen if we're sitting here working, um, rescuing somebody, it's a windy day, this can kind of start building up slack, get way down low. This is obviously not safe. Okay, to prevent that, that's where the lock of the ASAP lock comes into play. We'll just take that, that button again right there, lock that off, and it should hang just fine. Okay, um, we'll, and we'll get back to that here when we go back into descent mode here. Okay, so I'm gonna take all my stuff off. Um, one other thing, I guess, before, if we're working, it's also, if we wanna tie it off, it's not necessarily necessary. Get this up so we can see. To tie it off, we go through this carabiner, okay? We come back up, we just do a quick overhand. Okay, probably could get it a little bit closer, but that's usually how they, can, they uh, tell you in the manual to tie it off, okay? So anyways, now we're ready to go back into descent. One of the most important things to do here, so we don't get hung up on this, is unlock our ASAP, make sure it moves. Get your hand back on this before you go down, and lower. All right. All right, so another way that we can use this clutch is we can use it for our raising and lowering systems. Right now we have it set for a, a lowering system. Uh, this is kind of the most simplistic uh, and minimalist gear that we use with this setup. Uh, we have our, our single clutch on our red line. Our red line will be our main line, our rappel always. That's how the bags are set up. We can just remember that as red for rappel. And our blue line here is our belay. So our blue belay is uh, set up in the bag with the proper belay equipment, okay? So the ASAP lock is our, blue, is our belay device. Um, it's run through. Um, as you can see, that's pointing towards the load when you're doing it in the lowering system. And as we come back here, um, we like to run that back through a redirect just to kind of keep some of the software from rubbing up against each other. So um, don't run it through the same one. It is nice to run it through a redirect though. That way it doesn't get out in front of this and, and, and just cause any um, side loading or anything. So that's run through its, its line. That's good to go. Now we'll just run through lowering, just the same as always. Always keep your hand on this before taking this out of the store mode. Bring it around and lower. Make sure this isn't locked, otherwise it's gonna be a bad day. You're gonna have to haul it up again. And make sure that's running right over here, right on that shoe, they call it. All right. Now we'll say we're ready to um, haul again. Lock that off. We can tie this off. Just do our, run it back through that carabiner and do our little overhand here. Okay, good to go. Now, we'll run back up here. Grab a, we'll make a three to one real quick. that were so conveniently positioned here for us and untie make sure we're keeping our hand on this push it back through and take the slack out and we're ready to haul so make sure that's unlocked and haul team haul okay now, reset it, pull that back up through. Okay, for now, we're gonna say, we've, we've done our three to one, it wasn't working. We wanna incorporate this Beckett here and change it to a quick five to one. So, 
All we gotta do, take this, bring it back to our becket. I just so happen to have a double sheet pulley here. And now we've got our five in one. Okay, make sure that's unlocked, and we can haul. Okay, now to, to lower it, just switch it right back. And next we'll go over our twin tension system. All right, another way these clutches can be used uh, is in a twin tension rope system. As you can see, we have both clutches rigged through our anchor plates with the blue and the red rope on each. Um, we also have run two ASAP locks out in front of each rope as an added layer of safety. Uh, this isn't always necessary, but if we have them, we're using them that way. Okay, um, so now the first thing we're going to do is use this in a lowering system. This is not a twin tension rope system video. This is just a quick use of the clutches in a twin tension. So the gold standard, from what I can tell, is still to have a tailor be used. A tailor is somebody besides the person operating these clutches that is going to be feeding rope through. Um, it doesn't take a lot of friction to stop them from going through, uh, especially with the smaller load that we have on down there. We have about a 100 pound load on. So Tanner is gonna be our, our tailor here. And as you can see in our system, we've run these back through a redirect carabiner off of our anchor strap. And what I do from here is something called a shark fin method, where I take these all both around and now we'll start lowering, lowering. And Tanner's just kind of watches the tracer marks as these go out. Another thing I got here, you want to make sure that that is through so it doesn't catch my hand. And now we'll continue to lower. Okay, and now we're, we're say we're down, we'll lock these off. Okay, and we can tie them off. We're gonna to switch to our, our raise now. All right, now when we're ready to haul, we've uh, removed our tailing rope from that redirect carabiner. Let's have these still set out, we'll knock our, our clutches and we'll just begin our haul. And you can hear that nice scratching noise. And haul team reset. Okay, good.